Welcome everybody to the Middle Easy Fight Fist Podcast. This bra, is bra, Luke bra. Tuma. <laughs> I Papa am here Luke Tuma. With Papa Luke Tuma with my co-host Dan Lamort, as always. The necklace and reckless <laughs> Dan Lamort. <laughs> and we're sitting uh, in some beautiful weather for a, for a nice change. Yeah, we're we're sitting outside for the first time and we're joined by uh, a guest again. Uh, it's been a while. UFC uh, uh, welterweight Randy Brown, everybody. Yeah, hey, the root boy. On? What's going on? What's <laughs> up? What's a up? nice setup for us. We've got some blueberry muffins and some fresh fruit and some juice. I think we're from now on, yeah, we're only going to interview Randy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're bringing people to he Randy's has, he girlfriend's hit. house. His, his girlfriend gave us lemonade, fruit, and muffins. This is fantastic. This is so much better than being in an NYU dorm room, which is where we yeah. usually record. We, we st- we we went, so we started recording an NYU dorm room, and now we recorded a hookah lounge yeah, the in the basement York of City. a hookah bar in the Lower East Side. <laughs> we really pride ourselves on being low budget. That's kind of what the whole podcast <laughs> no, is this about. This is actually the nicest place we recorded, so. <laughs> that is true. Well, Tiger Shulman's was nice. Yeah, that was cool. We also recorded in Chris Weidman's uh, office one time, and. It was just filled with his boxers all over the place. Yeah, we recorded like on a pile. Of Chris it looked Weidman's like a fr- underwear. yeah. It was just a pile of Weidman underwear. It looked like a frat house. That's funny. It so uh, we're drawn by Randy. We're the rude boy. That's a Jamaican thing. No, yeah. I don't know much. <laughs> yeah, it is a Jamaican thing. So Jamaican thing. Are you Jamaican or did you just move to Jamaica with your family? Well, both my parents are Jamaican, and I'm pretty much Jamaican because I was raised in Jamaica. Yeah, you know what I mean. I've been in Jamaica since I was like three years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? I came back here when I was 16. You know okay. what I mean? So I've spent more of my life in Jamaica than I have here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So did you start fighting in Jamaica or did you start here in the U.S.? I trained a little boxing down there. Yeah. You know, a little bit of boxing. And then I came here. Start, I got with Gleason's boxing gym, you know. Met some coaches there. I started putting them some work there. And then finally, eventually made the transition over to MMA, yeah. you know. Were you a fight? Were you always getting into fights growing up? Or no, I'm always interested to know if UFC fighters ever um, got into fights growing up. Because I'm not a UFC fighter, and I got into <laughs> a lot of fights growing up. Like it's different. It's different. Like I got into fights, but it's it wasn't like like I don't know. It was altercations. It was yeah. altercations. It wasn't like physical yeah. fist yeah. fights. You know what I mean? It was, was there like, ever a point you were like, I'm better than other people at this? <laughs> at fighting? Yeah. Like I've always felt that tra- way. Yeah. yeah, I've always. Felt I guess that you way. have to when you yeah. do it for a living. Like, yeah, for some reason I don't know. For some reason I always just felt like I felt like I was better than you know I was good and I can I can take it to the next level even when yeah. I was watching TV and what this is everybody thinks that watching it was one before you actually get in there you know what I'm oh, saying that's so, like yeah. me when I watch Kevin James's movie Here Comes the Boom <laughs> I'm like yo I could totally get even a little bit fatter become a teacher and then become a UFC fighter <laughs> <laughs> Kevin James really inspired me more than any fighter <laughs> did you uh, did you ever think about sprinting because you're living in Jamaica I ran track really yeah I, I ran track did. for a minute yeah I ran track that whole time I was out there I ran track. You know, really? there's there's dudes in the Olympics right now. You know, Johan Blake is actually a yeah. good friend of mine. Beast. We're on the same team. Really? Yeah, yeah it's a good, we used to run together. Davis really? Primary. Yep. Wow. Did you run 100 meter, 200 meter? 100 and 200. Yep. Damn. So you're fast. I mean, I'm all right. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I, so you you probably started a little after Bolt then. Yeah. yeah. No. 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 I never I never knew of Bolt until until I was here actually. Well, yeah. No. No. Actually. He was uh, after Bolt. Yeah, he was already doing things, actually. Yeah. He's like yeah. a legend in Jamaica now. Yeah, right? absolutely. And Blake was like the next guy after Bolt. He yeah. He was like the next product. Can you imagine that, getting famous for running? He, he, that is so interesting. That's what my family wanted for me. My mom, to this day, she's like... Yeah. They want you to be a sprinter. Yeah, she was they like... They come Yo. to your fights at all? Yeah, she comes to them. She likes... She uh, likes and uh, now she accepts it. We've talked to a lot of fighters who don't come to... Their parents don't see them. No? Uh, my mom, she, she comes to some of them, you know. And she yeah. does. She watches it on TV, but it's, it's too stressful for her. Did you ever think of trying to, like, make a run at the Olympics as a sprinter or... Mm, definitely. That was the whole my whole goal at one point. And, you know, that's what everybody wanted for me. I was pretty fast, you know, so... But, you know, once I came to America, you know, I just... It's just not what I wanted to do anymore. No. You know I mean, I just wanted to do other things. Yeah, I'd so. say fighting's a little more exciting. Yeah. You met some Americans, you were like, I want to beat the shit out of these people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, people always ask me when they sit and they see me too, or they, they hear me speak, and they'd be like, oh, well, where's your accent? Where's your, you don't sound Jamaican, you know what I mean? But I actually, I turn it on, turn it off, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. like, if we don't want to talk patois and yeah. talk to them, then we, yeah, we can't talk to them. We, yeah. So if you like change it up, you can change it up whenever. Wow, that's right. <laughs> oh, I did uh, this pet on Saturday. I it was a front. I had a show in New Jersey, and there was not a big crowd. But upstairs, it was packed out, and the band that was playing 
was a Bob Marley cover band of all bald white guys from Clark, New Jersey. And I had never been more upset, one, at the fact that they were doing that, and two, that they had like quadruple the size crowd that I had. Hearing a white bald guy from Clark, New Jersey go, everything gonna be all right. I was like, dude, no part of you ever really talk like that except right now. It was so embarrassing. Just hearing it. Oh, really? it was, oh my God. It was the cheesiest thing. Oh, it looked like a bunch of drunk uncles who thought it was a really good idea to just say. <laughs> they have the fake Marley. dreads on? <laughs> no, thank no. God. That would have been. They couldn't even grow fake dreads. They were yeah. fucking bald. If, if they had, like, just. That, I would have liked if they had that fake, you know, Rasta hat with the dreads coming out. <laughs> Maybe it would have looked better when they were singing No oh, Woman, dude. No Cry. Blonde dreads look so bad, man. Dude, look at Yeah, old white guys do Let's not that. offend Felice Herrig. <laughs> Oh shit! I saw her last night. She was on. Uh, I saw her last night. <laughs> she was on American Ninja Warrior last night. Really? Lost in two seconds. You know, an American Ninja Warrior, where you got to jump from panel to panel. She's at the. I thought she'd be good yeah, at that. Yeah, I think what happened was she didn't realize how far the jump was, and she jumped to one panel, next one, and then ate shit on the third one. What does she have on? Blonde dreads. <laughs> she did have the blonde dreads in. <laughs> and they, they really, I felt bad because it's post recorded, so they know what happens. And they were yeah. talking her up. Then when she's like, UFC fighter, top ranked, falls in the water in three Shit. seconds. <laughs> 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 but that's a different uh, type man. of skill, American Ninja Warrior. Yeah, those <laughs> grip strengths are. You, to be able to grip something like that small for a long time and just being able to yeah, they do the ones hard, where they man. go, they climb up the staircase and then down the staircase. On the way down, the panels go on an angle. I couldn't hold on to one for I think a second. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't. That's a skill you don't need. I'm, uh, someone made this point. They're like, I don't get why people do like a hundred pull ups when life or death situation. You only need one pull up. True. If you're hanging that's from it. a cliff, you need True. one pull up. That's very good point. No, you're not gonna bang out a set of a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> if you're hanging off the side of a building, you're like, let me let me work this <laughs> muscle up right now. <laughs> so, uh, what got you into boxing out of sprinting? Like, why did you why did you start boxing? I don't know. I just I started watching. You know, Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. Actually, I was watching this this dude. He fought last night, believe it or not. That's what I always say. You never know who you inspire, no matter how big or small you are. Yeah. This dude, Anthony Durrell, he Anthony fought last Durrell. night. All right, he won. You know at what I mean? the Barclays he fought? Yeah. No, no, no. He didn't fight at the... He fought in, in Texas, I think. Oh, shit. You know? And El Paso, Texas or something like that, right? Is yeah. that a place? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right? Something like that he fought. So your Jamaican he, um, accent is much better than your Spanish pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> El Paso, was it? <laughs> it was something like that, right? So he fought, and he won, you know what I mean? But he got a twin brother, right? It's Anthony yeah. Durrell and I think um, Andre Durrell, right? Yeah. And I used to watch those dudes, man, and they, when they were coming up, you know, and I was, I was a fan, and I was like, yo... You know, I think I could do this. You know what I mean? I think I, I just admired it. You know what I mean? I was yeah. like, yeah, I think I could fight. I want to fight. They were long and rangy. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. long and rangy. And I was like, hmm, yeah, I could give that a shot. And I started training. And next thing you know, I was good at it. I had a, a, a one combination. It took me right through the gloves and everything. I had a yeah. jab, jab, cross. Jab, jab, you cross? won the gloves? Yep. I had nice. a jab, jab, <laughs> cross. Novice, novice. Not open, right? Novice. <laughs> but I had a, I had <laughs> That's a, all you I had a like jab, jab, <laughs> cross. And I used to fuck people up with my jab, yeah, jab, jab cross. Good. You know the right? reason why I still think I might do the novice gloves one day mm -hmm. is because they let the heavyweights wear shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the only thing that drew me to it. And I was like, if I could wear a shirt, I might box. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh... <laughs> How'd you then, at what point did you realize that you were going to switch to MMA? Yeah. All right. So that's when I was going back and forth from here to Jamaica, here to Jamaica, here to yeah. Jamaica. At that point, I was 16 already, and I'm going back and forth. And when I went back down, you know what I mean, I and I come back, I can't find coaches. You know, it's hard to train, yeah. find guys that you like, and da-da-da. So I was going to this school, this, what, tech school called um, TCI. TCI. Yeah, that's down, this, like, literally across the street from Hensel Gracie Academy. Oh, shit. All right? And... I started Googling shit and everything. I see MMA or jiu-jitsu was popping up. I had no idea what jiu-jitsu or MMA was. Yeah. All right? Then I saw this fight on TV, BJ Penn versus Joe Stevenson. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. I saw that fight. That fight was bloody as hell. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, I like that. Yeah. I mean, that shit looks crazy, right? <laughs> uh. So I was like, all right, I'm still looking for gyms to go to, boxing gyms and shit. And then I found out that Henzo Gracie was like right across the street. So I walked in there. And I'm like, all right, let me check this shit out. All right? Walked in there. And I tried a trial class, 
and I'm getting like choked up and and like in my mind, you know what I mean? I'm like, all right, I'm strong, you know, yeah. and like I'm looking yeah. at little guys and geese. It's like karate to me. Yeah. My mindset, you know, I didn't understand. I had zero understanding at that point. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's like karate. You thought you were gonna be breaking bricks. Yeah, yeah I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm. Like, I know they're gonna like, you know, yeah. try to grapple you, you and shit. Gonna be a bunch of nerds. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Well, well essentially, it is yeah. a bunch of nerds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, sure. but I'm like. I'm like, all right, I'm going to be able to do good at this. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got fucked up, bro. <laughs> really? Right, by some dudes that were like 130-something pounds. I was oh, just getting shit. wrecked. Dude, this yeah. is everybody's <laughs> jujitsu story. When they start jujitsu, everybody's story is yeah. like, I came in, there were these skinny-looking like weirdos. So I was like, I'm going to run through them, and then they choked me out. Yo, like you swear. You swear. Like, in your mind, you just think like, yo, I'm just going to fucking dominate. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm an athlete. I'm just going to run. Th- and, yo, know, next thing you know, you're getting tied up and shit like a pretzel. You can't move. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, damn. So that's, the rest is history, man. I I got my student loan back. You know they give you that refund shit back, and I went over there and I gave it to I gave it to the front desk guy. I was like, yo, how long can this get me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I just been there. That's like something out of a movie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I just been there. You know, how, how long after you started uh, training there did you start competing? Because you started Ring of Combat, right? Yeah, but I started I started I didn't start my MMA career. There. I started yeah. doing jujitsu. So I started doing, I did a few jiu-jitsu tournaments, you know what I mean? I did well, I got my blue belt, Yeah. you know, and I needed to find an MMA school because Hensel Gracie, they have an MMA team now, but at that time there was no MMA team really, you know what I mean? It Damn, was just, so you've competed in sprinting, boxing, jiu-jitsu, and MMA. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> and I've competed in eating his muffins. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, that's, that's nuts, man. <laughs> yeah, man. So, so then when you when you started do training like actual full MMA, you probably came in with a pretty broad range of skills because you were a boxer and then you competed in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, so I was, I'm pretty pretty athletic, you know, at that time. And I was, oh man, I, when I was younger like that, my, I was a fucking, I don't know, I wouldn't say I was, I was, I was arrogant. Nah, you know, I was pretty arrogant. Yeah, you're <laughs> you know, I, was, I was arrogant, I was cocky, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, I still am now in a in a sense, but I'm much more humbled and and. Cause you're not a big trash talker, really, going no, into a fight. No, no, it's, you know, because I, I met I met my coach, you know, and he he instilled certain beliefs in me, and then just just working with him and getting to understand. I learned, I started to learn about martial arts. Yeah. yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like I did all that other shit with no base, no martial arts understanding. It yeah. was just all athletes being yeah. a, being an athlete, and and you know, it's all sport. You it know was what I mean? essentially being better than someone, not out thinking them at that point. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was super athletic. I used to run track. I box. You know what I mean? I was I had I was good at jujitsu. You know. Yeah. I was, Especially when I came on the amateur scene, I was fucking running through yeah. these kids. Like, it wasn't even funny. And then I was feeling myself, you know what I mean? Yeah. Went pro, I was just dominating people. I was when I had one pro fight, you know what I mean? I was ready. I wanted to be in the UFC and shit. Yeah. I think you know in I mean? the I read in the ring of combat, in every fight, you either finished a fight in the first or second round, right? Yeah, I finished everybody. And you yeah. were the champion of the ring of combat. You were the welterweight champ. Mm-hmm. And then I fought up in a weight class once. Some dude from Bellator came and I fucking smoked him. And then I, mean, I, I saw that uh, it said catch weights. <laughs> that's why. Yeah, yeah. When I did that, I was like, oh, fuck that. I'm a fucking animal. In my mind, I was like, yo, I could beat anybody. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? And then you go you, and then. Uh. So I, I was going to say, like, someone like John Jones, that's the guy who you see just the freak athleticism mm-hmm. kind of put him over people. Do you think he's also had to learn that martial arts aspect? Absolutely. Or, you don't think you could just truck through people forever off no. of straight athleticism? Nope. You need to learn, you know. Not necessarily even just the martial art aspect, because martial art, for me, I say, all right, when we talk about martial arts, martial arts is, is applied to your life, you know what I mean? And you, as an individual, just being a good person in general, you know yeah. what I mean? So are you saying John Jones is not a martial artist? <laughs> I don't think so. A lot of, most guys, most guys are not martial artists, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, there's tacticians. He definitely doesn't follow athletes. a code outside yeah. of the ring. Nah, you know what I mean? And I get it, you know what I mean? You're a world champion, you got... The world is yours at that yeah. point. You know what I mean? You got money, more money yeah. than you know what you could do it. You know what I mean? At that point. It's always interesting to see a fighter get money. Because some of them handle it great, and then some of them either do that or they throw dollies through bus windows. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's and then they talk like Connor talked that martial arts talk. But there's only one aspect of martial arts that he understands. Strike. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is not not even striking. Like martial arts, like honesty and justice, polite courtesy, courage, compassion, sincerity, sincerity, duty, loyalty, honor, that type of stuff. Damn, I will, really, I will say really there's loyalty. loyalty. <laughs> yeah. I will say he has loyalty. Loyalty. That's why I said a certain aspect. Yeah. His he loyalty flew on is a big. jet to defend a, his a, a is 12 big. and 13 fighter. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fucking all of them. Right. That's his best friend. You know yeah. Yeah. what are you going to do? You know? And I respect that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, he talks that martial arts talk, but the Martial, the I feel like what he has as far as a martial artist is that loyalty one, yeah, and 
understanding of molding everything and, and just being like water. You know what I mean? When, yeah. when we talk about martial arts, everyone automatically goes to Bruce Lee. Like, yeah, be like water. It's such a fucking cliche. I hate when people yeah. say that, right? Yeah. But it's true. But that's the only aspect of martial arts I feel like a lot of these dudes understand. Yeah. You know what I mean? You need to apply martial arts to your life. You don't, it's how you carry yourself. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be out here, you know, making, you know, just look, making an ass of myself, you know what I mean, yeah. in a ring on national TV. Yeah. And then, you know, that reflects badly on my teacher. That reflects badly on me, my yeah. family. You know what I mean? That's what I've noticed about you is you're very. Because well, to fast forward to the you, you beat Mickey Gall at Madison Square Garden, which is mm-hmm. in New York, which is your home state. Yeah. And after the fight, if I recall, you got booed. Yeah, I'm gonna that. And then even in the post fight <laughs> interview, you were even like, "I understand it." Yeah. You weren't like even that upset about it. Okay. As much as you were just you you had compassion towards the people. You know what it is? I, I do understand why he's more famous than me. Yeah. He's yeah. more popular, more well known. Like I said to you before, MMA fans are ignorant. Yeah. All right? It is what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. We were at Atlantic City. We <laughs> yeah, saw the nice. fucking nine fights in the crowd. Yeah, people yeah. are retarded. There was a guy and a girl like fighting, fist fighting in the crowd. No, they swear. They yeah. swear, right? People think they just know shit. They don't in know. In the guy's defense, no clue he about. couldn't hit the girl back and she was throwing some <laughs> serious combos yeah, at she him. She was fucking him up. She had that jab, jab, cross. You got going on. That poor guy was looking like lost because he couldn't hit her back and she just kept throwing. I would have just started screaming, head movement. <laughs> she head might have thrown a spinning back elbow at one point. <laughs> um... But yeah, that comes to, we, so, we talk about this a lot on the podcast, is the there are some guys who don't have a ton of experience who the UFC pushes into stardom. And true. Nikki yeah. was one of those guys. I mean, I don't even know. It definitely wasn't fully deserving. I mean, he's a great fighter. Mm-hmm. But beating CM Punk is not really. Well, I it's, think it's a business aspect. We, you know, the, from the business side of it, he brought, he has a lot of WWE fans. You know what I mean? He oh, brought, yeah. he, you know, he, he's he's a good looking kid. You know what I mean? People, yeah. people like him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Why not? You know, why not promote him? He he had to, he beat Sage. He called him out. He he started controversy, and that's what what yes. I talk about is, as far as being a, a martial artist. You know what I mean? I don't start controversy unnecessarily. Yeah. You know what I mean? But controversy is what sells. Absolutely. So that's a tough catch twenty two for me. It you know really what I mean? is. But yeah. honestly, but I'm not that guy that shies away from controversy. But I'm not just gonna be an asshole and just come out and start talking. Well, shit. the thing is, because if that's not who you are, if you're not the you, you don't shy away from it. But if you're not the guy who likes to brew up controversy, if you start trying to do that to sell more tickets, it's gonna come off as disingenuous. Exactly. And the fans hate that. P- everybody hates. Then that. you come out. Then you look like Colby Covington. Exactly. You know what I mean? Oh, me and you have talked that. to. You just look like me a and retard. Randy have talked yeah. about Colby before. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Yeah, he's a complete retard. Yeah, it's, like, it's like you could tell, and you could tell. When Connor does it, you can tell. When John does it, they, and they do it in different ways, but you can tell when like those two guys do it, or it's somebody real. like Nate Diaz, uh, Nick Diaz. Yeah. When those guys talk trash, Bisping, you could tell they're being genuine. Yeah. You can tell that's really who they are, and that's mm-hmm. how they came up fighting. And they've been in a lot of street fights. You could tell Cody Garbrandt Absolutely. is being genuine. When Colby does it, you could tell he's, he's a weirdo. to play a character. He's a weirdo. It's weird. Yeah. And it's like, what but but it, it still talkers? sells. That's now he's yeah. making. That's what he gets yeah, the money, and it puts him up in the ranks. Of porn stars. Yeah, you know what I'm him. saying. That's, that's the, just that's the game, and you got to play the game. And yeah. I understand that. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna shy away from playing the game. I don't care. I'll play the yeah. game, right? But I don't want to. I don't want to come off fake, and I'm not gonna. I don't start unnecessary drama. You know what I mean? But you respect because me and you were talking about Dylan Dennis, who fought yesterday and for the first time on Bellator. I think that dude. And he was a little cocky, saying he made the the card the biggest ever. But I I didn't agree with that. But I will say I bet people tuned in to see Dennis fight. Absolutely, because one of his connection with Connor. Yep. And it's funny because the Bellator talks about Conor McGregor more than Conor McGregor talks about Conor McGregor. Yeah. It's insane how much Bellator <laughs> brings him up. Well, after he tried to fight one of the refs, he's nah. kind of like yeah, he slapped one of their officials in the face yeah. and then went on the record saying, I slapped one of your officials <laughs> in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so did, was there? were you extra excited fighting a guy like Mickey because he had that little push behind him? He had a little notoriety? I was excited to fight him because he talked so much shit. Yeah, and you yeah. guys were friendly. You, yeah, we were friends. Before. We were friends. We made him train together. I got text messages of him texting me and shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's just it's the business, you know what I mean. But I'm not here for friends, you know what I mean. Yeah. I'm here to I'm here to make my money and take care of my family and build a legacy and retire somewhere on an island, preferably Jamaica. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. That's why you keep some of the Jamaican accent. So when yeah. you retire back there, you can bring it out again. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> keep all of it, all of it, map all of it. I got management in Jamaica, you know what I mean. I go out there, I do shows out there and shit. You yeah. know what I mean. So I'm always in Jamaica, man. Always. Do you, you do like shows? Do you stand up? Mm-hmm. 
no, no, no. <laughs> like, like yeah, I do morning shows and shit. You know, oh, smile shit. Jamaica. I, for <laughs> some reason, my mind went to stand up. <laughs> went straight to stand up. <laughs> Would you ever do stand up? <laughs> shit, I'm not funny. I'm not. A funny guy. <laughs> no? yeah. I leave that to the professionals like you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We were thinking of putting on a show where fighters do stand up. So yeah, I guess we, we'll cross. I, would, I guess we'll cross you off the list. Yeah, I'll be fucking horrible. <laughs> They're bro. all scared. Like every fighter is like, wide well, was talking to us. He's like, you guys. Man, you have so much, so much balls to do that, man. I was like, dude, you got kneed in the head by Yoel Romero. Like, don't tell me about my balls. Like, yeah. <laughs> Shoot. Get the fuck out of here. Yo, yeah. I don't know, bro. It's scary. I don't know. I don't think I could do it, man. Because, like, you get booed and, like, that's the worst thing if you're not funny. And you just stand here. You're telling yeah. jokes and you feel, and, and it's just quiet. It's and you're just looking around. Like, Booing is pretty bad, but I will say, I've luckily never gotten this one, but I saw it happen to someone recently. And it's the age-old one where you're up there and you're bombing and someone in the crowd just goes, Next, oh. that, to see the that defeats a comic right away. Yeah, just see oh, the passion; man, it, it leaves their face. I think the piercing silences. I've been I've been booed, and I think the silence is even worse. Because yeah. when you're getting booed, you can't believe it's even happening, and it's almost just funny. You're like you're kind of just like smiling. You're like this is nuts. But when when it's just piercing silence, there's really no. Wait a you you're, do. you're just in it until it's over. Damn. Yeah, it's like when you're a kid and you're talking to your parents and they ignore you. That's what it's like. It's just a room full of people who don't care what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> what I, f I find it fascinating, though, because that means in a span of three minutes, you made a room of 100 people hate you to the point where they're not going <laughs> to yeah. listen to you. That's an impressive skill to have. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I feel think, like with that I being said, comedian, I think Colby Covington would be great at bombing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> if I was a comedian, I think I'd be more like Bill Burr. You know Bill Burr? Yeah. yeah. yeah I've seen I think, you tweet about Burr a few times. You're yo, a fan of his. Yeah, I love that dude. Yeah. That's I love great, that dude. You know man. why? You know why? You because it's real. Like, the shit that he talks yeah. about, I can fucking relate, bro. Exactly. It's like, yeah. like the stupid shit people do, and then you see people, and it's just like, everyone has a fucking opinion. Everybody thinks they need to speak on yeah. some shit that they have no fucking clue about. Yeah. And, they, and they fucking, they'll die. They'll die yeah. on their fucking opinion. <laughs> dude, you know what I mean? That's... They're like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Burr's why kind of like your internal voice. <laughs> yeah, really yeah exactly. That's why I like him. Like, dude, I like that him. opinion, dude, that's the new thing I, that drives me crazy where I'm like, you see all these comedians like talking about politics or yeah. like, actors talking about politics. It's like, why wouldn't I just go to a fucking political scholar if I want political advice? <laughs> exactly. Like, I don't oh, need to hear that shit from you. Let me figure me. out what's going on politically. Let me talk to the guy that tells jokes about his dick. That's the guy who's going <laughs> to I know strictly about. get my exactly. political you know? knowledge in the basements of New York City bars. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's the <laughs> last place I'm going to go for political knowledge. I remember the, the time when I realized Bill Burr was like my internal voice was he had that bit about smashing the muffins. <laughs> oh, I love Where that he was bit. so mad at the lady that he just wanted to punch every muffin. Yeah, and, and I was like, there's so many times in my life where I just wanted to ruin someone's day like that. And when he goes, he goes, my girlfriend's asked me why I'm laughing. And he's like, I actually tried to explain to her. He's like, I was thinking, what if I started punching the muffins? Yeah. Like, that part oh, I the, especially related the to. The most relatable thing was when I, it was a joke I had written until I, and then I heard him do it. I was like, I'm never going to do this. Is when he's like, I'm not depressed, but the only time I want to kill myself is over the minuscule things. Where he's like, when I promised someone <laughs> I was going to bake a pie. And then I was like, fuck, I can't do I'm going to kill myself. Because the idea of killing yourself over something so minute is hysterical. Yeah. Uh, my favorite one is when he's just like, yo, we need a plague. Straight up, we need a plague. It's like, yo. <laughs> yeah. it's, like it's time to get rid of some people, man. He's like, when, it's like, when is one of the... the traffic. Yeah, it's yeah. like, yo, when is someone going to say it? When is one of these, these government officials going to come on and say, Let's say it? He's like, I'm waiting for someone to say it. You oh, know? That'd be amazing. It's like... It's like 30% of you motherfuckers just have to go. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be I, I'm not a Trump supporter, but if Trump went on the news and was like, guys, no questions asked, I'm releasing the bird flu virus through all of the airwaves good today. Yeah. Good <laughs> luck. I'd be like, I respect that. Oh, Let's dude, see who fucking subway makes it. Would be, can you imagine how nice to be taking the subway? It'd be so much better. Oh, uh, shit. You like the F train? It'd be like oh, only 30,000 people left. No. It'd be perfect. Perfect. Like, bro, yeah. we all, like what do you say? We all can go to the game or some shit? Yeah, we yeah, all get our own New York block. Every, everybody gets to do yeah. something. Maybe yeah. then floor seats for the UFC would have cost $1,000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, we all could go. Everybody will go. Yeah, no doubt. Did you, uh, yeah. have you always fought 170? Yeah. My coach swears, everyone swears, thinks I'm going to have to go up to like 85, but. Really? Just because yeah. you're tall? Yeah, I'm tall. Like, bro, I'm like fucking, the other day I was like 215 pounds, bro. Are you kidding? Whoa. Yeah. You're not beating these muffins. How, yeah. how tall are you? Right now, at this very moment, I'm like 200 flat. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. How so tall that, are you? That, that, that cancels the question I was going to bring up later was that. Neil Magny's opponent dropped out for UFC Liverpool. I don't. I, I don't think no, I'm not. No, I'm in him. shape. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not like I'm not. I'm like out of shape. Too much. Like it's like muscle. Like I'm in. Yeah. You know, I'm training. Oh, and trust me. I'm, I'm not sitting here calling you out of shape. I'm <laughs> 315 pounds. <laughs> are your uh, Are your weight cuts rough? No. You know what I mean? I've been I've I've been doing it so long, man. You know what I mean? I just yeah. feel like 
I don't really kill myself. You know, I, I know how to do it. Because I did it two ways. There's two ways I used to cut my weight. As an amateur, the weigh-ins were the same day. And I feel like this was a blessing in, in disguise, you know what I mean? So I under, started to understand my body. Like, when I was an amateur, the weigh-ins would be the same day. Yeah. So I would cut the weight gradually, and I would get comfortable close to once like like maybe like three pounds or five pounds the most off of 170 yeah yeah you know what i mean so i got used to doing that for like a couple years then when i went pro i figured all right now i can cut it more drastically because i have 24 hours to rehydrate and i never did ivs ever you know what i mean so i just kind of i just learned how to just understand i just understood my body man you know what i mean i know how to do it and i have a fast metabolism and i i I never have problems making weight i always make weight you (laughs) (laughs) i understand my body too it's meant to be fat i had two abs at one point in my life still proud of them they're hanging on my wall (laughs) through my yearbook (laughs) oh it's, no, I didn't even get that because in, in my senior year of high school, I was still kind of – I mean, I just – I lost 50 pounds that year. But then when I went to college and started, like, doing two-a-days for playing baseball, that's when I got in, like, the best shape. So I had, like, a, an eight-month window of, like, really muscled up, toned Dan. And then I got Tommy John surgery. It was downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Are you uh, – so how tall are you? 6'3". Six, 6'3". Three. Six, three. Mm-hmm. So you're probably What's taller your sign? than most of the 170 guys. Right? Yeah, I'm taller than everybody except for Matt Dwyer, my UFC debut. That motherfucker was six five. That's crazy. Yo, that was awkward, man. It gave me a six five motherfucker to fight. Yeah. Like, was that a decision you... or a sub? That was a decision. Oh Bear shit, it's windy. Yeah. Um, that was a that was a decision. Unfortunately, you know what I mean, it should have been a sub. I had him yeah. in like three different submissions. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't get him. I always find that because you've won a few fights by submission, mm-hmm. and that's interesting because in the ring of combat, you were just knocking people out. And then, but this is we were talking about this before the podcast is that people don't give you enough credit for because people thought Mickey Gall's ground game was fantastic, and you had you have a great ground game as well. So I'm saying, man, yeah, I mean, I don't know what it is, man. People don't think I have jujitsu. It's because I, I I look like your typical striker. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. And I I have a lot of KOs on my record and TKO, so it's kind of like. But I have submissions too, you know what I mean. But people look at me and they be like, "You look you athletic, tall." Yeah, they're like he yeah. don't got no jujitsu, man. Exactly. Like you saw, I was going for that gogo plata. Yeah. I should have had the. If I was humble, if I was humble, if I humbled myself and settled for the for the oma plata, I probably would have got it. But I was like, you know what? Fuck that. Let's, <laughs> let's get this bonus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I miss everything completely. That's what. That, that's nice. That's nice for me to know that in the fighter said, "There's let's get this bonus." Yeah. Because the whole time I watch a fight, I'm like, I hope they're thinking about getting that bonus. Oh so, hell yeah! Because those fifty Bro, G's are nice. So you think about that when you're in there absolutely people scary. people people act like they don't let me tell you something right i fought i fought i fought in my ufc debut when i fought matt dwyer right yeah me and andre if you know andre harrison he's my brother we used to live together right he's yeah. uh he was a world series world series um featherweight champion and titan featherweight champion yeah. 18 and 0 dude's an absolute animal shout out to dre yeah um me and him used to live together in elmont right and let me tell you, we were broke. I'm talking about dirt fucking broke, right? Like, yeah. Oh, I know. Like, back rent back rent was like three months. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? And then, the choir. And, yeah. <laughs> and it was just horrible, man. You know what I mean? Like, putting money together to f- try to find fucking food that night and shit. Yeah. Uh-huh. And every time I fought, I remember, literally, I remember it word for word to myself. Dude was in on a takedown, right? And we always talk about it. It's like, yo, if you lose, you get one check. You win, you get two. Yeah. If you win really good, you get three. <laughs> right? So I was like, I'm sitting there and dude's in on a double. And I know if he gets his takedown, he wins this round. And I'm sitting there and my coach is yelling instructions and everything. Yeah. At that point, you know what to do. You're on autopilot. But you need that extra kick, that extra kick, like that extra just ugh, like, like yeah. get off me. You know what I mean? And in my mind, all I remember saying is like, yo, I'm getting two checks. Uh-huh. I am getting two checks. I need two checks. Yeah. I'm going to need this, that extra check, bro. You know what I mean? And that's always in my mind. And I just, that's it. And then I got him off me. I stopped the takedown and then, yeah. you know, the fight continued. But at that moment, I was like, yo, I'm getting two that's checks. Crazy. I'm going to win this fight and I'm going to get two checks. Do you think the guys that are brawlers do that because they want that third check? Yeah. Like the Eddies of the world don't yeah. want to be lawlers. You yeah, they want to put on the show. About, I always think that about Gaethje because he's yeah, a great Gaethje. wrestler and never utilizes the wrestling. Totally. Do you think they just go in there and bang because they're like, I'm going to get this performance yeah. and I check? But it, it, it's, it's, you got to be selective with it too, I feel, because for me, I've never had that fight yet yeah. where I'm like, oh, I'm just free and I want to go crazy and just fucking, you know what I mean? Which I have the ability to do. Yeah. 
but I'm not stupid at the same at the same time. You know what I mean? I'm no, my name's Touch and Go for a reason. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. I hit you, you don't hit me. All right, so um, Touch and Go, great Twitter handle. Yeah. <laughs> but um, guys, guys, you have to pick and choose that. Like the time of your career, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I feel like now, like my next fight, I can go out and do that. You know what I mean? That'll be great for me. You know, it's great for the fans. That'll be a good time for me to people to see who I am and what I'm about. My last fight, that wouldn't have made sense. Yeah. My last fight, I also was injured. You know what I mean? So I couldn't strike with him. Right, because I would have fucking washed him up quick, you know. But and another thing, I had something to prove. People are talking shit about my ground game. I'm like, yo, I have, I need to prove that because I've been held down before. You yeah. know what I mean? I've been submitted. You know what I mean? So I don't want to go down and get branded as this guy. Like, oh, all you have to do is take him down to win. So I was like, you know what? Let me take the, ju- the jujitsu guy down, all right? Yeah. And let me go into his world and fuck him up in his world. You know what I mean? And then that'll show people. So my next fight, I won't have to be worried about someone trying to take me down. They need to think about, yeah, think twice before taking me down. Because then that changes your next opponent's camp because now they spend a little more time on the ground exactly. game and a little less time on the striking. So exactly. Do, do you think a lot of guys, well, and do you do this a lot, but do you think a lot of guys try to beat their opponent at their own game? Like, let me beat you at your own game. If you're a striker, no. I'll, I'll bang with you on the... You Not everybody. Up. That's that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> John Jones does it. I was just about <laughs> that. John Jones does when it. Jones took down D- when Jones is wrestling with DC, it's like, what the fuck is he doing? But, but he's like, trying to prove, like, yo, like, I mean, I did it in my last fight. It's not smart. <laughs> I mean, what you yeah. do it? It's like, yeah. yo, it's like, my last fight could have went so much easier. It could have went yeah. so much easier, but it's like, yo, you know what? Fuck it. Do you, do you think you kind of have to be nuts to do that? I mean, like, a little bit, like a, a little while, bit. You know, yeah. sometimes you got to be a little, like, an overthinker a little bit, because yeah. I'm an overthinker sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. and I, that's what it, I overthought that. It was like, which is, but I don't know. Maybe I'm right. You know, maybe I needed to do that, because like I said, Maybe I don't want to get branded as a guy that you all you got to do is take down the win. Yeah. You know what I mean? And hold him down. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I need to have a ground fight. I've yet to have a ground fight. Here's a ground fight. That's great. <laughs> yep. Fedor took down Mir last night. Fedor hasn't gone for a takedown in ages. I mean, it was, it was more so a throw than yeah. a takedown. Shit. But yeah, he, he threw him, which Fedor hasn't thrown someone in, like, I think they said five years. Yeah. And then just a vicious ground. He. He stalked and slapped the dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but Mayor came in hot, though. Mayor, Mayor was like... He tagged him right away. Yeah, right away. And then my favorite was in the post-fight. Uh, you know, uh, Fedor has the same translator that he always has. And uh, Big John asked him if he felt the punch. Then Fedor just translated to, I feel nothing. <laughs> and then Chael Sonnen... The, my favorite was Chael Sonnen comes in, talks some shit to Fedor. And Fedor looks at his translator and just waves her off and says, don't even translate it. <laughs> <laughs> Fedor's such a bad... The it's FBI so... was there. They were investigating him. Yeah. For what? Uh, because he's friends with Putin and Trump, I guess. Oh, he's yeah? worked with both of them. But yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a monster, man. I remember Ariel Hawani had him on his show. And the translator was there. And Ariel was like, this is a pleasure to get you. You don't often talk in long interviews. Yeah. He's like, why is that? And then the translator talked to him. And then his response was just, why chat? <laughs> that was his whole response. Okay. He's a guy who just shows up and fight. And the fact that he's this old and still doing it. But that's the thing. I had this conversation with my with my coach the other day, right? Because my coach, my sensei, right? he's super humble. Yeah. Right. I don't know if you ever heard us together on um on Matt Serra's podcast, right? If you listen to that, we were just like, when I'm with him, I'm like a completely different way. I gotta be too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But um, he's super humble, right? And I was telling him, I was like, listen, look, look at the way. Um, Fedor's career is right. Fedor's a fucking legend, a fucking animal, right? Oh my god, he was a massive. beast. Yeah. And then look at obviously MMA wasn't nowhere near as big as it is today. But then you look at a guy like Conor McGregor, who he accomplished a lot. Yeah. Huge, huge, huge accomplishments. But his wins are nowhere near as devastating and as back to back, right? Consecutive as yeah. Fedor. I mean, Fedor used to look like he was gonna knock people's heads off. Yeah. Yeah. But but Conor McGregor speaks well. You know what I mean? He he he's out there. He's outgoing. You know he's funny. You know what yeah. I mean? And he's just you know he talks shit. He's controversial. And Fedor doesn't say anything. He's just like uh oh. yeah. And then you know look it's, at look at the way his obviously hardcore MMA fans know who he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, is he making that same type of money? Is this crazy? Will he go know. down? Yeah. Will he make that type have that type of legacy? Yeah. You know I what would mean? make the, whole, the assumption that at one Conor McGregor press conference, he talks more than Fedor has in his whole career. Yeah. yeah. Fedor is a man of no words. Yeah. He really doesn't mind not talking. Yeah. Which I respect both sides of it. Well, yeah, yeah. I respect if that's what you want to do. That's like the businessman. You know, just show up, do my work, and leave. This is just where I work. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time. The, it's show business too. Yeah, what yeah, we do yeah. is show business. If you decide to do that, you then have to be as good as Fedor. So yeah. you have to are knock you, people out like that. Are you considering being a little more like 
uh, outgoing in the public eye, like talking a little more shit. I mean, people don't know me. More. I mean, I'm 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 already outgoing. You yeah, know? I'm just. I just don't talk shit. I don't have to talk shit to you. You know what I mean? If you get, if you know me, then you know me. If you don't know me, then hey, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm not gonna be go that extra mile and try to go crazy and try to be someone or not. I'd be extra like, hey, look at me. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you know me, you know who I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have a great personality. If you know me, you know what I mean? If you don't know me, hey, then you don't. Then yeah. don't yeah. act like you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's it. You know. But yeah, we're we're in a time in the world now where if you really do want to know someone, there's so much out there to get to know them. Nah. So it's on you if you don't do it. If you just judge and assume without getting to know someone. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So on the yeah. topic of getting to know you, what is is there's no fight set up yet. I know it's probably getting close. It's getting close. We're in the, we're in the works for something right now. Yeah. Because you know I, mean? I know just... you just signed uh, a four contract fight extension. Mm-hmm. Well, what about a month ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. Congrats on that. Thank That's you. great, man. Thank you. Thank you. How uh, how often do you fight usually? When I was in ring combat, I fought every two months. That's crazy. I fought mom um, and my UFC debut. I fought five times in thirteen months. Jesus. <laughs> And then, um, and then you get in the UFC, and it's a different pace. Yeah, and then and then my the next year, the following year, when I fought Bilal, right after that Bilal fight, I just have I I was out for nine months or ten months or something yeah. like that. And that was Bilal was a late closer. replacement. You were supposed well, to fight uh, Charlie Ward, right? No, no, no. Um, that was um I was gonna fight Charlie Ward. I was gonna fight Charlie Ward, but then who stepped in? Um, Kamozi, Chris okay. Kamozi stepped yeah. in. That was after Charlie Ward had killed the guy too, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was that was hype. You know, that was a lot of hype yeah. on that. And know? then he went on to lose two fights and get released. Yeah, and he got released. But um, that's crazy. I was that supposed Charlie to fight. Ward killed a man. It's insane. I was supposed to fight this dude. What's his name? Um, what the hell is his name? Sullivan. And he popped. Yes. Yeah, he popped. yeah. He got popped. Yeah. Shotta. And then I fought this dude on two weeks' notice. Um, what's his name? Bilal. You know, and. Good fighter, Bilal. Yeah, nobody gave him gave him enough credit. Like that dude is, he knows how to fight, man. He knows how to play the game. He's remember the name, right? Bilal, yeah. remember the name. He knows how to play the game. You know, that's <laughs> that's that's what I remember fighting him. I remember, okay. He understands, you know, he understands the game of fighting. Yeah, he's not trying to hurt you. He's not trying to, you know, finish you. He's trying to just win. He's trying to just, you know. Score, 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 yeah, especially score. Especially with the Stay new UFC score. point system, it's, yeah. it's very much about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, you get uh, if I'm correct, you get a lot of points for being the aggressor now too, right? They they factor that in. Now they are, yeah. you know. And it wasn't always like that. Now it, it's very, it's it's weird because in a fight, when a fight starts in the first round, it's very easy to see who the aggressor is going to be. Yeah. And they usually maintain that for the entire fight. And the other, it's how do you go into a fight wanting to be the aggressor? I don't even think about that. You I don't just think about it, for yeah. me it's different. For me when I when I come in to fight I It's very in the moment. Yeah, it's in the moment and I, I just know I need to hurt I need to hurt you in order to get so I'm not thinking about I don't even until now I'm starting to think smarter, you know, and think about oh, scoring points. I need to score this takedown at this point. I need to hit you at this point. Before man, I was just all about I just need to hurt you. I need to I need yeah. to if I if I hurt you the fight won't last. If I know if I do this to you, the fight, we won't go to distance. Yeah. You know? that and, that's, and that's why I got so much finishes. It's kind of simple. Like, you go in, just, I'm going to roll with it, hit this when I need to. Yeah. Instead of going in, like, you got a guy like all of the Gracies, for instance, who just go in there and their only plan is to take you down. I feel like that's so much more stressful. Yeah. Because now they know what they're going to do, and if they don't do it, they, it, it fucks with their head. Yeah. Do you, do you think you haven't had to worry about the points because of your athleticism? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know, but... I've I've I'm I've pride myself on my athleticism in the past, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying to not rely on my athleticism so much, you know what I mean? I'm now I'm starting to play the game a little more. Yes. You know, my last fight and now, you know, moving forward. But maybe, you know, maybe that's why I got so much finishes too. Maybe it was just like I was always just I just need to hurt you. You know, I remember my coaches always tell me, you know, pain at every point. At every, every there's no point in the fight. Where I'm not thinking of hurting you. Even you can see even when I'm top I'm Papa Mickey, even he's covering, I'm just fucking raining yeah. elbows, you know, I just need yeah. to hurt you. Yeah. You know? And guys don't last. A lot of guys break, you know, underneath that type of pressure, you know, or that type of intention, you know, because guys hit sometimes, they wanna hit you, but then there's guys that wanna wanna when they just hit you. You know what I mean? When I'm some guys when they're trying to hit you, they're trying to fucking you're destroy try- you. Inflict damage. Yeah, they, every exactly. Shot. They're trying to damage you every yeah. shot, you know, and that's how guys it's get like finished. Chipping away. Yeah. yeah, you know. So ideally, me and you talked about in a, a few weeks ago about where you'd like to fight. 
I think the perfect plan is July fight and then hopefully MSG if they book that. That's what I'm saying. fought I'll, in New York before. It'd be nice to fight there again. Yeah, absolutely. I'm targeting July right now. Right now, we're, we're talking. I, I believe so. I believe so. That's the one in, in Staples Center? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. You know, So we're targeting that. But um, right now, the person we're targeting hasn't said anything back. Yeah. So Is it a top 10 opponent? Top 15. Top 15. You know, so we'll see. I think you, I, I, after watching Atlantic City, I think you versus Ryan LaFlair would be a good fight. Ah, uh, man. Not Ryan. That's my dog. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> that's, my, that's my training partner. So many people have said that now. Oh, I would, shit. I would, I would never fight Ryan. No. Together. Yeah, we train together. You, that's you, my you dude. never fight him? I would never fight Ryan. No, unless it's for a title, we'll fight each other he's probably. At, yeah. He fights at the same gym as you in Long Island? No, he's from um, Farmingdale, uh, Long Island okay. MMA. Yeah. You know? That's my dude. I wouldn't fight Ryan. Yeah. You know, we spar. You know what I mean? So you go over to Law MMA sometimes? And yeah, I go over there sometimes. It's sometimes nice he comes to me. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you, uh, they got a good team. Ryan's a savage, man. You know, Ryan, I don't know. It's something though. when he fights, I don't know. I just like, I'm like, he just, he doesn't fight. The things he does in the gym... And the way he is in the gym. Yeah. And when you feel him, you're like, Ryan can easily be top five fighter. Yeah. His last fight wasn't exciting, but it was a very tactical fight. No. I mean, it, people didn't realize it, but he won that easily. It was 30 27, won every round. But it they, didn't look like it, but he it doesn't was get a dominating the round. Yeah. That's do the you, problem. So do you think when. Do you think guys who, because we hear that about a lot of guys where it's like, you, man, you see what this guy does in the gym, and it's like he looks like he could be a world champion someday. Mm -hmm. And not that they're not great when they get in the ring ryan ryan is a great fighter but do you think the reason that they don't show the stuff in the ring as much as they do in the gym is because they're fighting more conservatively or they're a little nervous or they're worried about the paycheck or absolutely you guys don't want to admit it you know but so that's a lot of factors man. it's everything your head is that guy in front of you could do one thing and it could throw you off yeah yeah the rest of it. he can do one thing and and you're concerned about it now and you're like oh yeah. oh fuck that you know it happens but guys don't want to admit so it at the end of the day you're locked in a cage to fight somebody there's so much that could go <laughs> yeah, through the head. Yeah, yeah, you know, but people don't realize that, you know, so yeah. it's so many different factors. Totally. So it's up to you. The mental aspect of the game is so important. You know what I mean? It's so important. And it, that's why you, when you watch a guy who is like, who competes at such a high level in the fights, who maybe isn't like quite the physical specimen, like a Gastelum. Mm -hmm. Like Gastelum is just a gamer. You could tell he, when he gets in there, he's just uh, yeah, he's competing. He didn't give a shit. That dude's beast. Exactly. <laughs> that's so, it kind of makes me think that the guys who don't worry about those things come into a fight exactly. and are kind of wild. Maybe Gastelum should have worried about some weight cuts in the past. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, he nah, Gastelum, Gastelum's good, man. You know what it is, too? He's, he's carefree. Like, that's what it is. I think the. A free, a free spirited fighter is a dangerous fighter. Yeah, man. You know, the freer you are, and the, and the the less you give a shit. You know what I mean? Unless it's yeah. about the extra check. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're good, man. Yeah. Don't think about the fans. They start booing you. Don't let them hype you up to do some shit out of character. Yeah. You know what I mean? Be free. You want to throw a fucking jump, spinning back kick? Throw that shit. You yeah. know what I mean? The you want to throw an axe kick? Throw that shit. You <laughs> know, don't think about it. Because that happened to me once when I fought Bilal, too. I'm sitting there, we're fighting, and I'm like, I'm thinking, and I'm like, I'm thinking so much and you know and I've never had that much thought in a fight before. Yeah. Because he was scoring and he's moving and he's just like I was so I had to think a lot and I was overthinking and I remember I was like all right I'm going to throw this spinning hook kick. I'm going to throw it. And I've never done that. Yeah. Usually you just do it cuz it's like no mind your mind is empty and you're yeah. just flowing you're just doing what you do. And I was like I'm going to throw this spinning hook kick and I was just like you know what fuck that if I throw it I'm probably going to slip. <laughs> Right, and then so you got in your own head, like and that. then I got in my own head, and I was like, you know, what? let me throw it to the body to be safe. Right, boom, throw a spinning back kick, it landed. I was like, fuck, I should have do that spinning hook kick. Right, <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know, he shot and took me down. I was like, fuck, I'm down anyway. Yeah. You know, it's like so much shit. You can psych yourself out, man. Oh, I've yeah. been there. The longer, Dude. the more I go through life in every single field, no matter what it is. I always learn that the people who succeeded it are the ones who just do it. Just do it. Dude. Yep, absolutely. That's, there's so much to be said about just. I mean, obviously, it's the cliche Nike saying "just do it," but it's true. when you when you stop thinking so much, life seems to become a little bit easier. But absolutely. also, it also is a training thing too. So it's like the more repetitions you get in, and it's a natural talent thing to start. Mm -hmm. but then it, it's a training thing where the more repetitions you get in, the more experience you have, the more you're able to just go on autopilot. Absolutely. So Which can be dangerous sometimes, especially in comedy. Dude, Because sometimes you hit, you hit autopilot in comedy if you're doing like an hour-long set. Mm -hmm. And then you'll, st like, I'll be telling jokes. And then in my head, I'll be like, 
thinking of what I ate for breakfast. <laughs> I'm just like, holy shit, Dan, you're talking right now and not even thinking about what you're talking about. Yeah. I should probably check in to see if it's making any sense. Well, the best the best feeling comedy wise is when you're on autopilot but you're going off the cuff. So it's like you're just fucking with the crowd or you're yeah. riffing in the moment. And it's like you'll get huge laughs and then afterwards you're like I didn't even think of that before I said it. It yeah. just came out of my face. Mm. Like, that's so... I'll just read. I love bombing on autopilot because <laughs> the crowd is like... They're like, this guy must be hating his life. And in my head, I'm just like, man, I think I'm going to get Taco Bell on the way home. <laughs> and I was like, I can't wait to just play with my dog. I got a new rope for him. Like, that's what's in my head. Uh, Even when I'm bombing, I don't give two shits about the crowd. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Autopilot's fun. That's uh-huh. the best way to be. Shoot. It's like so, when you drive. Sometimes you drive to the same place every day and you don't even realize you're driving. Yeah. You're like, oh man, I'm on the road right now. Yeah. Maybe this is why I crashed a bunch. <laughs> do you uh <laughs> do you so do you have people you're eyeing up for the next you got this four fight contract? So he who, definitely does. He's just not telling us. You're not he's telling us the next guy, but who are you who are you who are you thinking about in the future maybe? Say you win this next fight. Are you looking at some people in the top ten that you'd like to fight? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, you know. Um there's a lot of guys I want to fight, man. There's a lot of guys yeah. that I think will make make for great matchups. You know, I want to fight. Obviously, I've been saying this for a while. I think me and Neil Magny would be an amazing yeah. fight. You yeah. know what I mean? And the opportunity's there right now. It is. It is. You know, but when is mm. UFC Liverpool? That's a month. May yeah. May 27th or May 29th? Oh, yeah, shit. almost exactly a month. So yeah, yeah about a month. So we'll you see. can make weight in a month. Absolutely, I can make weight. I can make weight in two in two days if I had to. So wow. wild. teach me your ways. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make 300 by next week. Let's do it. <laughs> Neil Mack, that would be a great fight. Uh, yeah, man. It's a because lot of guys, man. If you beat Neil, I mean, Neil has a record of who's who wins. And, I mean, he's won and lost to some of the best of them. Yep. Alan Jobuan, too. I think that would be a good fight. You know, he just he's coming off a win off of Ben Saunders. Yeah. And, you know, I think me and him will put on a crazy People show. People love Joe Bond. Do yeah. you, uh, do you want to fight it? Do you have aspirations to fight another big talker like Mickey? So, like a Masvidal or a Colby or something like that? Oh, Masvidal would be sick. Yeah, it'd be dope. Yo, that would be sick. His boxing's crazy. He's, Yo, he's me and crazy. him will put on a crazy he show. Fucking like a street, street fighter. Like, I used to like watch Kimbo, him, man. man. Yeah. Yo, that would yeah, be an honor. Those old Yo. YouTube videos where the titles are in all caps? Hell yeah. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. That reminds me of the old school PlayStation uh, backyard wrestling games. Yeah. So much. You were, I remember they used to have like a button you could set the table on fire. <laughs> and they would fight on the table. Oh, man. But those old school yeah. games were so that's what got oh, me into man. fighting. Yeah. <laughs> but um You're but hell yeah, those obviously. talkers the talkers do the talkers hey, they do the talking for you sometimes. Yeah, you it's kinda fun because they're gonna they're gonna sell the yeah. fight for you and it's like yo, but Mickey Mickey talks so much shit, but I don't think he even did a great job really of of, of selling it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he got a lot I didn't get as much media as him. You know what I mean? So I didn't even get to defend myself a lot. <laughs> you know I, mean? I was just listening to shit like, oh, wow, that's fucked up. Does the UFC tell you if you're going to do the media or do you get to decide? Because like when we were in Atlantic City uh, mm-hmm. a few weeks ago on a Thursday, only about eight fighters were slated to talk to the press. Depends. It depends. Um, like, could you back out of that if you wanted? Or I assume that's part of the contract. It's like, hey, you're going to have to talk to some people. Yeah, you have to talk. You have to, you have to media there. obligations. You have to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But... You can get your own, you know what I mean? You can talk to anybody. There's plenty of MMA outlets, you know what I yeah, mean? Media yeah. outlets that you can just talk to. If you wanted to, could you, and if they didn't have you set up to talk to the media, and could you ask and get into the media day and talk to the media? Like, would it be your decision? No, it's not your decision, but you got to show up. I mean, if I want to go, I'll just show up, you yeah. know, yeah. see what happens. Yeah. Right? Yeah. People are going to talk to me. Because I know the media, we could put in requests for who we want to talk to. But at the end of the day, it's up to the fighter if they're going to do it or not. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Because like, even at, it, I found it so interesting that. And uh, even after a fight, because usually the winner, as you know, the winner goes backstage and talks to the president. You could request for the loser to go back there, too, which is a ballsy thing to do. Yeah. Like, this guy just lost after a four-month camp, and I want to talk to him for my I don't, video. Yeah, and <laughs> we put in requests, but I, we requested we only requested Edgar and Kevin Lee, and they both won. So no. we got to talk to him anyways. Oh, yeah. I think we requested Cummins, too, but he didn't want to talk to anybody. No. He got, yeah, he got, he got molly yeah, off. That's rough. Fight. I think you should, you should still talk, though. Even when you lose, I think you should still talk to the press. Yeah, I think that. I, I mean, think, that did so much for Cruz when he lost to Cody. Yeah, I think that helped him so much that he talked to the media like that. Yeah, that he went in with the sunglasses, standing up, and they just faced it and, and like owned on, it. Yeah. yeah, he faced the music like a man that day. I mean, and people love that. Dude. I that that I gained so much respect for. Him. I mean, they I already do. loved him, but the fact that he lost the fight that he was so passionate about. I was like, yeah, I'm going to talk to you guys. I lost. I was the worst that, man today. That takes a rare breed of guy like a Connor or a Cruz to be able to take a loss like that. After the fight, aren't guy. there sometimes where you get, how quickly, because most fighters go to the hospital after, right? Mm-hmm. Just to get checked? Yeah. How quickly does that happen? Because there were some guys who got whooped on who still came out and talked to the press before they went to the hospital. Uh, I don't know. I 
I've never been to the hospital after oh, fight. Not so it's, it's, <laughs> I, yeah, I always thought it was like a mandatory that you had to go no matter what. No, the doctor comes and checks you right outside the cage. Oh, and, and then they the come back stage. They look at you. You go back there and they check your hands, your face, and yeah. You know. Because I know the, in the last fight, Barbosa got sent right to the hospital. Like, yeah, out of the octagon, a... right to the hospital. Yeah, yeah the same, for man. sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, that's well, rough. It, 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 next time, if you ever fight in Brooklyn again, the fight. hopefully you don't have to, but the fighters get sent to my mom's ICU. Oh, yeah? <laughs> they get sent to her little part yeah. of the hospital. Oh, whoever I'm fighting, she'll meet them probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell her to keep an Sorry, eye on Sorry, man. I won't meet your mom. <laughs> <laughs> on the slip of paper, she's going to write, reason for visit, rude boy beating. <laughs> <laughs> Do you... Uh, do you ever consider going up to 85? Because like you look at how well Ka- uh, Kelvin's doing at 85, and he clearly looks like a natural 170 year. Like he looks, he looks like he's got a lot of body fat at 85, and he still killed it there. And I mean, GSP did well at 85. Do you ever consider doing that? Because I thought about it. It's not like you'd be a small 85er. Thought about it, but I don't know. Thought about it, but then it's like, why? I don't have to. Yeah, I'm comfortable, man. I'm comfortable. I'm I'm not depleting myself. I'm a huge fucking welterweight. You know yeah. I mean, I'm strong as shit as a welterweight, you know. Yeah. And you're newer. You're not new to the division, but you're still one of the young guys there. So might yeah. as well make the damage you can there. Yeah, I'm good, man. All my I, I spar. I'm able to spar with all the 85ers and stuff, and the 205s. I get to spar with the big guys, you know, like the welterweights and the and the yeah. 55s. Don't spar me because I'm too big. Yeah, you know, and I think that's cool. You know, I like it. You know, and I, I feel like I have an advantage. You know, when I when I go down, you know, I'm long, lanky. You're not that I'm like I blow back. Not like I blow back up. In between, you know, my weight cut, and then you know, yeah. what I mean, I'm comfortable. I come back to like what, maybe 180, 188, mm-hmm. 190, the biggest I've ever been back in the cage. You know what I mean? So I feel good. That's uh, great. Uh, just talking to you and, and getting the calming mindset. Do you do like when I played ball? A lot of the pitchers we would do like mental training exercise. Do you partake in that? Because you seem like a very zen guy. Like we used to do yoga. Mm-hmm. Like we, there's certain mental stuff. I know to get in the right mindset. Do you do that? Because you seem so relaxed. Um. Yeah. I was supposed to do it today actually, but I missed it. Uh-huh. I missed it for for the interview. Um, I was supposed to oh, do. Thank you. Um, we we meditate. You know, we meditate. Yeah. It's called zazen. Okay. We meditate at Budokan. They probably yeah. were doing it when you guys you pulled up. The, yeah. You... When you guys pulled up, we probably um we just we oh, just that's did. Why it was so quiet. Is it? Yeah. That's for meditating. <laughs> they meditate. Do you do TM? What's TM? Transcendental meditation. It's where you. You get like a phrase in your head and you say it. It's like what Rick Rubin does and David Lynch and. No. Stuff like um, that. Well. Oh, my sensei, what he does is he, he has a book that he reads from, right? Sometimes, it's different different types of books, you know? Um, like, different, he's a, he's like into like warrior shit, like way back when, like like samurais, like warrior samurais and yeah. shit. You know, and he reads like warrior quotes. Are you scared? Scared of dogs? No, I'm good. Nah, all, right. all right, don't worry, they don't yeah, bite. To the listeners, Randy's dogs are <laughs> I, I, I honestly now. didn't want them to uh, breathe it into the mic. I was all like, right. I was just trying to get the mic hey, here. C- come here, come here, come here. Yeah, let's get an interview with the dog. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. For, for me, TM is the marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I get my mindset. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. but my coach, he's into like all that, all that shit. So it's like, well, it'll be quiet, you know. Then he has a bell. He hit the yeah. bell, ding, and then he, oh, re- shit, and then, like yeah, it's, it's it's crazy, right? It's like, it's like he hits the bell, ding, and it then, works though. Hell yeah! I and used you're sitting to love there in the dark it. and you're just fucking meditating and you're just you're just thinking about the fight. Like I think about the fight and I think about every scenario that could happen. I think about me being in every worst position and me escaping those positions and me just dominating after every bad thing has happened. And he, and he's reading like, he's like the way of the samurai. He's like, you know, and he's like reading, reading different lines. And it's like, it's like something out of a movie, man. I I can't even, I can't even begin to explain it. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. People forget the importance of envisioning where you want to be. Absolutely. If you don't envision where you want to be, you're not going to get there. If you don't have a clear picture of what you want to do and who you want to be and how you want to get, that's like that's. I think that's 75 percent of the battle Mm -hmm. in life is just figuring out what the end goal is. Yep. If you just, I mean, that also comes into not being that free, but it also is freeing. Because mm-hmm. now you're you're still thinking free, but you're on the track to where you want to be. Exactly. So you have an idea of what you want to do. You have a game plan. But if that if if knock on wood and that and that, that game plan is not working out, you can adjust. You can always adjust. You yeah. know, just adjust your sights. You'll be fine. Are you uh, after a fight? Are you a, a partier like some guys or no? Um, depends. Depends. Sometimes it depends on on who I'm with. A lot of times I like to just go to my room and just chill. Honestly. Yeah. Like I only party, I only party because like like me, my brother Andre, my yeah. friends, you know, they like to party. So I'm like, ah, I don't want to leave them hanging. All right, I'll go party. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But I'm more the guy that's just like, I do daytime activities, man. Yeah. I like to fucking, I'm, I like to, I like to travel. I want to travel the world. I yeah. like to 
go to like warm countries and jump off cliffs and that type of no shit. shit. You know really I mean? stand out. Man. You know I mean? Meditating. No, nah, no, nah, not even. Nah, it sounds good. <laughs> not even serious. Not even like that. You know what I mean? It's just I just like shit like that, man. I like. That's great. It's it's cool to I see like, different energy because Al Jermaine, When we interviewed Al Jermaine and Al, oh, different yeah. mindset, dude. Nah. Hey, and I saw them right after the fight when Al Jermaine. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! Sh- <laughs> The dogs are going yeah, at it. Yeah. They wanted to get on the podcast. I don't blame them. Yeah, they're not going to. They stop really me. don't like Algernon, man. <laughs> Heard his name. <laughs> oh, they're not going to stop. Um. <laughs> Hold on, let me get them back inside. Hold up. You know. Oh, all right, we're back. The the dogs were just what they were saying was I can't believe Algernon spent forty seven thousand dollars on a chain. Yeah, they were, <laughs> they were really bad about his spending. <laughs> On a chain? Oh, that chain's real? He claims it's, he real. it's real. He says it's real. Forty seven thousand. <laughs> I'm not sure how. Ch- I, oh, I actually, man. I want to be. So- it might be worth forty seven thousand. Then he rented it for like you know, four bucks. Shit. Well, I mean, he is also a real estate agent. Him and Al. Yeah, they, true. They do real estate together, so maybe he's in the know. house. We saw them right. At, I saw. It, I was backstage after Algerian won, and he's like talking shit for the media and stuff. But Al was like all hyped up. He's like, yeah, want to party? Like, well, you know. Everyone yeah, everyone. Goes. Everyone likes to party, man. But for me, it's like I mean, I party. It's fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it just gets redundant. It's the same yeah. shit. It's the same shit. You know what I mean? And it's like, for me, like I said, man, I like to do daytime shit. I, I want to skydive one day. You know what yeah. I mean? I want to do, I want I like that type of shit. I want to, I want to ride it. I want to, it sounds, I don't want to sound like, 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 I'm not a hippie. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like, I'm not like, you know what I mean? I'm not, like you said, I was like zen out. It's not, it's yeah. not that angle. You know yeah. what I mean? But I just like that shit, There's man. Nothing yeah. Wrong with that, yeah, it's nothing wrong with it, but no, it's just. I'm I just, totally a hippie. I, you know what I mean? Fun, I just, I, I, go to, I, wanna... I go to fish concerts, do, you know, just real. That's <laughs> See, I don't my even life, know what man. that is. It's, 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 a, it's a hippie band from back in the day. Yeah. It's, uh, I like it's infinity just, pools and shit. I'm bougie. Yeah. I'm bougie a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like. I like. You know what I'm saying? I like. I like. You infinity. and Joe Rogan would be great friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You could do the bat. The the. What does he do? He does the Epsom bath where you float in the tank. And then yeah. That, the tank. that type of shit is sick yeah. to me, man. You also seem like you're someone who really likes new and different experiences. Even just the fact that you've competed in four different sports. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's like a, a, an experience thing. You're a young guy and you've already done a, a lot of stuff. You get so. one life. Why not wear a bunch of hats during it? You know? Exactly. Yeah, I mean that's how I feel. That's how I feel. I like. I enjoy that type of stuff. Like, and then sometimes my like my 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 brother Andre, he'll, he'll give me shit. He'll be like, he'll be like, oh, you never want to come out. You never want to come out. And I'm like, bro, what am I gonna do? Like, <laughs> I come out. I come, I was out twice this week with you. Already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yo, what the fuck am I gonna do? It's fun, but like that's the thing where it kind of after a while becomes like, oh, it's not a new experience. Yeah, you know it's like getting into it yeah. I wanna out. I wanna fucking let's go somewhere and ride jet skis. You know what I mean? Yeah, let's yeah. fucking that type of shit. You know what I mean? Like let's go and. Let's party somewhere else outside the country. You know what I mean? That yeah. type of Same shit. way, but you'd be surprised how many fun activities have weight limits. <laughs> 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 I've wanted to skydive until you look at the weight limit. Like, I'm going to sit this one out because I'm going to fall real fast. <laughs> That'd be a funny reason to lose weight. Like, why'd you lose weight? Like health reasons? You're like, no, nah, I just wanted to jump out of a plane. Oh, you know what? I'm going back on a dine now just so I can start going on roller coasters again. <laughs> oh, man. You know how sad it is? The, most roller coasters you can't fit on when you're fat. But sometimes they have a special seat for fat people. So that means there's a separate fat line. Do you know how depressing that line is? It is a line of all the fat people waiting. It doesn't even go to the roller coaster. It just goes to a fucking gym. Yeah. It's, it's the most sad line. It's just a bunch of fat guys like, yeah, you know, I guess I'll sit in this seat. <laughs> it's, uh, it, 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 uh, spending time and being athletic and doing a lot of stuff like that and then overweight, I'd say athletic is the way to go with a good burger here and there yeah <laughs> set the road like, with a good burger we talk, we're, we're going back to after fights so we talked to edgar after the last fight he's like you know what I'm not going to party i got my kids with me i'm gonna go back to the hotel room eat a cheeseburger and have a good time yeah even like me and you we have a mutual friend felipe Nover, who uh, used to be a, a fighter in the ufc his thing was he got a six pack of whatever beer he liked at the time and he just go back and drink the beer man just chill sometimes I, I, even like after a show like so when you're on the road, you have to meet every single person. So the right thing to do is to do your show yeah. and then meet and greet with the fans who are there to see you. Mm-hmm. But that gives you no time to decompress. Obviously, fighting and stand-up is different, but you're still bearing your soul for 60 <laughs> minutes on a stage. Then you got to go shake hands and take pictures. Sometimes you just want to sit down True. and go through what just happened. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, processing is such a big part. Otherwise, you just kind of just start going through the motions, you yeah. know, every time, and then it's it's this not a motivational real. podcast at this point. Yeah. We're helping people. <laughs> We're fixing someone's life right now. Yeah. This is for all our fans in uh, New Zealand who need help. We have a huge New Zealand following. I don't oh, know yeah. why. Yeah, New Zealand, Kenya. It's concerning. Kenya, we have a big following too. Like when the numbers come out, I'm just like, why are more people in New Zealand downloading right now than America? <laughs> 
I mean, they really fuck with it. So I think I think people will like this one. This is a pretty good one. This is yeah, this, this is fun. <laughs> people I like think this. Uh, we're at the time to wrap it up. Cool. You know? Uh, um, so the next fight, you can't say who, but expect to see it soon. Hopefully you have July. A time frame for it. July. Yeah, hopefully July. July. Yeah. You know, hopefully it's not in that fucking what's that Idaho card. Yeah, that, that yeah, shit. Yeah, when you, when you told no. me you were fighting in July, I was like, I really hope he gets yeah. Vegas or uh, not, LA maybe. and not Idaho. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't no want to go to Idaho. Partying out there or new experiences. <laughs> Nothing. It's just, just meditating the cornfield. You, you come back on a plane, just sitting on your plane, just like the fuck was that? I feel like on a plane ride to Idaho, you might be the only person. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, yeah, we got to enjoy your flight. It's just catered to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anything? So, social, uh, media, social media? Um, yeah, you can follow me. Follow me at touch, letter N, G-O, underscore. So that's touch and go. Twitter and Instagram? Both um, the same? Yeah, it's Twitter, Instagram, same shit. Perfect. You know? As, uh, and, uh, we're at Fight Fist Pod. At Fight Fist Pod on Twitter. We should read the... Uh, got a couple more reviews. Oh, did we? Yeah. Five-star reviews. Uh, we have... Uh, GQ underscore McCade on Sunday said, "Great podcast, great content, entertaining and unbiased. Keep up the great work." And I'll then, just root uh, that. I am very biased. <laughs> no, <laughs> not no. a Marlon Moraes fan, <laughs> <laughs> or, or Ali fan, <laughs> or Ali, no, yeah. no, not a bit, not a big Ali fan. <laughs> Ali, <laughs> dude, he gave me I'm, shit at the press at the yeah. post post fight media press. <laughs> For I what? asked Frankie a question. I was like, "Oh, uh, I was like, come hit you with a couple good shots. Did you feel rattled yeah, at all? Talk to shit to you. Game plan. He just <laughs> and Ali's behind all us, all the media going." I don't know what fight you looked at. He didn't get hit with shit. And, like screaming just like fucking Vince McMahon. I give you credit though. What a suit. That guy has oh, a great dude, suit game. Shiny oh, suit. Man. I like shit. Ali. I think Ali is cool, man. Yeah. I like Ali. He ro- I, I, I found out he rolls with his fighters. Yeah. 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 He, you know, his fighters should bring him in the that. ring to do their fucking post fight interviews. <laughs> <laughs> They'd get more fans out of that if they brought him in there. <laughs> but uh, and then we got one more uh, Teep to the bone uh, from Knuckle Up 101. Benefit wow. of Middle Easy His for you. His name had Teep in it. I love a good yeah. Teep. Teep to the bone. Uh, Shit. Knuckle Up 101. Been a fan of Middle Easy for years. Listening to the podcast is not only very entertaining, but requires less reading. Great Hell show, yeah. guys. Looking forward to many more. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I agree with that. And, to uh, comment on that, I, I did a podcast last week where I was supposed to read a book for it. Didn't read a single page. No, not having it. Went into it just kind of knowing what it was about. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you guys give us five star reviews and ratings, as long as you give the review, put your name in it, we'll read it off on the next podcast. Yeah. As always, I've been Luke Tuma. Thank you so much, Randy Brown, for joining us. Yes, yeah, no problem. Beautiful spread of food. I'm Dan uh, uh, If you're in Chicago, May 22nd to 27th, I'm doing nine shows at Zany's, the legendary club. Come out, watch the new hour. Then also, stay tuned for the live podcast. Uh, yeah, Maybe absolutely. we're going to do it in New York and Madison Square Garden. Hopefully, Randy will join us for the live podcast as yeah. well. And I'm, uh, I'll be in L.A. in May. If you guys are out in California, come see me May 17th through the 24th. I'll have uh, dates up on my Twitter and Instagram. At Luke Tum on Twitter. At Luke.Tum on Instagram. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Middle Easy. Love Peace. you. Bye. Peace.